Azure Glean. Reprisal. Having repelled the forces of the Western Church, the Kingdom and Alliance armies joined together to launch a large-scale coordinated attack on the Empire. Preparing to assault a key Imperial position, the Kingdom army uses northeastern Geert territory as a bridgehead to press further south. Meanwhile, a reliable ally returns to their side. It's good to see you safely back, Roderick. I understand matters have begun to settle down in the West. They have. It took more than a few lengthy inquiries, but I believe we finally excised the foul seed of discord from our soil. And the changes at the top of houses Gideon, Mateus, and Elador should ensure it never takes root again. So they're keeping their territories then? I would have expected us to remove them completely after what they did. Such is easier said than done. Our prior situation with House Clyman took time as well. Yes. Replacing the head of a territory always brings dissenters crawling out of the woodwork to oppose it. Be they nobles or commoners. At least now we won't have to worry about our land descending into chaos behind us. We can't just keep repeating the same mistakes. I must say, though, I'm surprised this all went as smoothly as it did. <laughs> I did used to be the eminent Duke Fraldarius, remember? I have just a bit of experience with these things. <laughs> In any case, we must turn our gaze eastward. How's the Alliance holding up? According to Gustav's report, Claude is holding out for the perfect opportunity to advance his army. Naturally, they don't favor their chances in a head-on clash with the famed Count Birdlies. So, for the time being, they intend to feign a deadlock and slowly dwindle away the enemy forces. It seems the decision to reclaim the monastery was a shrewd one then. It's our best path forward. I know we're slated to advance on Hevering territory, but shouldn't we hold off till the Alliance can come help us too? No. On the contrary. If we can show our individual might warrants attention, the Empire will have no choice but to dispatch more troops west. Which should, in turn, ease the burden on the Alliance and their army. Claude and I agreed to as much. The real question is whether we can even trust him. It's impossible to tell if you ask me. If anything, he might be trying to wear us down. Soften us up so he can beat the stuffing out of us later. I doubt he would do something like that. At least, not in the midst of pursuing the same goal. But you're right. Claude's tricky to pin down. You can never really tell what he's plotting. I don't believe we can be too cautious here. We should consider every possible angle. Agreed. But if the Alliance does try anything, Gustav and the Knights of Sero should be more than enough to thwart their plans. For now, though, we march on. Ready your units. So, we finally take aim at the Empire in earnest. Yes. We must finish this swiftly, for the sake of all those caught in the middle. Hmm. If you don't mind me asking, Your Majesty, do you have it within you to topple the Emperor? I speak not of military prowess, nor the strength of our army. No. I speak of your emotions. He's got a point. I mean, she's your stepsister. Anyone would hesitate to cut down their own family. She is an old friend as well. Though I doubt she has any recollection of it now. Rodrig, do you truly think my hand will waver? I, who cleaved my own uncle's head from his shoulders? Hmm. Now, seeing as the Empire was involved in the tragedy of Duska, there is still much I must ask of her. 
can ask her. In a way, she and I are no different. Starting wars of our own volition. Sending countless innocent lives to the feet of the goddess. However noble one's reasoning may be, a deed like that cannot go unpunished. And if she refuses to yield, then as a king, and one seeking revenge at that, I will take her life. I'm pleased to hear it. Ah, oh, that reminds me. I meant to give you this earlier. A letter? One from Lady Patricia. I uncovered it during our inquiry of Viscount Elador. From my stepmother. I hope you'll forgive the intrusion, but I have already examined its contents. The letter contains no new information of note. That said, I expect you'll find the subject matter quite disturbing indeed, Your Majesty. I see. I will read it later then. Oh, Dimitri. Uh, have you read that letter from your stepmom yet? Ah, uh, yes, I have. It was a missive requesting the then Viscount Elidor's cooperation in her conspiracy against my father. She claimed he would have much to gain from the king's elimination, all while shrewdly expressing sympathy with his objections to the reforms. I had it investigated for signs of forgery as a precaution, but such a search returned nothing. The letter is authentic. Meaning your stepmom was a willing participant in the tragedy of Dusker. She sent so many to die and would have done the same to her own stepson if all had gone according to plan. All out of the desire to see her daughter again, or so Cornelius said. The wretch's words deserve little weight, but I believe she spoke true. In every memory I hold of my stepmother, she was always looking past me. As if the one she truly cared for was somewhere else entirely. Get upset. That's horrible. I never knew my real mom, but the woman who adopted me loved me with all her heart. That's how it should be. It was horrible, yes. But what of it? There is no guarantee a parent will come to love their child. Still... Being faced with such plain evidence of her crimes is a difficult thing to come to terms with. I had once thought her among those I would avenge, yet now she lies squarely in the path of my fury. Pretty heavy stuff, yeah. I can tell you're troubled as well. You can see straight through me, huh? Guess that's what three years together will do. It's my son. That dark mage from before. He was familiar with my power somehow. And yeah, I know you said you trust me, but I'm not so sure I even trust myself anymore. I just can't stand not knowing the truth. Who am I really? No matter what answer awaits, I will continue to place my trust in you. That hasn't changed. But what if I transform and attack you? I would do whatever I must to restrain you, naturally. Failing that, I... <sighs> Forgive me. It helps no one to utter such words. It's fine. If nothing else, the threat of death is good motivation for me to get this power under control. Have you lost your mind? It almost sounds like you'd be okay with him killing you. I don't want to die, of course, but if it was between that and killing a friend, I know which one I'd pick.
It's pretty close. Hmm. I'd like to hear from everyone. Please share any suggestions you have. What about this? <laughs> Alright. At least at the beginning. Cooperate with nearby workshop to procure high quality blacksmithing tools. Acquire materials to expand the blacksmith. Acquire materials to expand the recreation quarter. <laughs> Eliminate the need for ingredients when cooking. So I'm not going to do the bottom one because I have enough ingredients as it is. And I don't mind using the ingredients. The recreation quarter. I don't really remember what that one is. But... So I got the same... I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll probably end up getting stuff there anyway. So with a blacksmith, is like... If I get the money, I can actually... I can actually get the materials to upgrade the blacksmith. And then I'm able to actually upgrade certain weapons further. So I'll do that one. I'll handle it. No then. That's settled then. Ready yourselves for battle. Right, so I get it immediately. Rodriguez rejoined you. Okay. Yeah, in that case, um, I think for like a majority of these next few side quests, I'll have to use Rodrigue to get him back up to speed. Hmm. The Empire lies in shambles. We won't be able to rest in a nearby town at this rate. It may not be readily apparent within our camp, but many people have lost their homes and more continue to do so each day. I can sympathize with the loneliness that comes from losing one's place in the world. Yeah. Um. Guess I can go ahead and expand the facility. Alright. So, what can I actually expand upon? Okay, so these are master smithing sets and all that. Unique weapons effects. Okay. <sighs> it's like all this costs money as well. The might gain by forging weapons. Increases the durability. Allows B weapons to be repaired. Okay, I'll do this one. Just get the artisan smithing set out of the way. Allows for the usage of unique weapon effects. I'm gonna get this one. Unleashing the effects of a hero's relic or sacred weapon will draw out its true power. For weapons, attributes will be unlocked. Might will be greatly increased. Durability will be greatly increased. For accessories, accessory effects will be unlocked. Some accessories will grant increased stat growth. So now, like those heroes' relics or sacred weapons won't be useless, and I can give them to specific people, so I can actually use certain combat arts and stuff now. I'm gonna go ahead... Increase the uh, I'll do this one. 
was like, honestly, I need, uh, uh, I need 25? I need 25 more Master Smithing sets. And then, uh, let's see. I would need, uh, 20? I need a lot, okay. And then, like, improve the quality of fuel using the forage lab for the highest possible temperatures. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Alrighty then. Um, where do I start? I usually start up top, so I'm gonna do that. Who's in here? Dorothea. How did things get to such a, an awful point? Where in the world is Edie? They say she's injured and that Duke Iyer is leading the Empire in her stead. But what if Edie is already... No, I don't even want to think about it. Oh yeah, the Merc Wrestle thing. Um, I have to look back at that because I completely forgot what that did. You've got a spring in your step today. Things have really calmed down in the kingdom. It's nice not to have not having to look over our shoulders all the time. I'm relieved his majesty was able to work things out and that the church is keeping order now. I appreciate what they're doing, but I have to admit, it's also kind of scary. Uh, ask what he means. Huh? What do you mean by scary? You afraid of getting on their bad side? Nah. -uh. What? No, that's not it. All I'm saying is that we're trusting them with a lot. How can I help you? It's so nice and quiet here. Such a far cry from Ferdiad. It's the Guardian Moon, and yet there's nary a speck of snow. No one will be freezing to death, will they? Up north, snow stays on the ground until the end of the year. Though sometimes it's still falling during the Great Tree Moon. They say the grass is always greener, and it turns out I'm a little green with envy myself. So I guess I'll go down here and then work my way back to the top. Hey, it's, it's Mercedes. Oh, that's right. Did you know that there's truly there's a truly exquisite opera house in the Imperial Capital of Inbar? I went there with my mother and brother a long time ago. Every part of it was beautiful, from the performance to the architecture of the building. I completely lost myself in the opera, and all the pain and sadness I felt just drifted away. I would love to go back to see the opera again. Maybe I should talk to Thor Dorothea about it. It's weird. Would they mention... It's like, would they mention Dorothea if I never got her? That's the question. To do and plain talking. In fact, you know, I used to think there was no reason for us to be at war. But after witnessing the devastation on the Empire, <laughs> I realized there are some things that cannot be overlooked. We must save the people of this land, even if it means resorting to combat to do so. I am certain everyone in the Kingdom Army is fighting with the same conviction. I think I got her speech patterns on... on lock. Wow. The coming battle will be decisive. We face the Lords defending the Empire's Western Front. Girth. I've been saying that wrong. They said it a different way. I don't remember what it was. Ox. Gillinger. And then there's uh, Hymir and Esar as well. I don't know how to say these places. What do you think? No doubt have you heard some of the these houses before. Uh, nope. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, not... I'm drawing a blank. I only know of the three houses. Thank you. Professor Hanneman, who taught in the classroom next to ours. He was from House Esar. Hmm. Or Esser. Whichever. We also saved the young lady from House Ox, who was held cop 
captive by some scoundrels. Oh yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember all that. No you don't. We have no strong attachments to them. However, some may find it difficult to raise their swords against this particular opponent. Please. Be mindful of such individuals. Will do, do do. Will do do. Uh, it's the chore master. I'll get some chores later. Hey, it's Catherine. Come to think of it, the kingdom and central church are carrying out a joint inquiry into the Western Church. They're doing it that way because some suspicious people infiltrated the church itself. Lady Rhea will be overseeing the inquiry as well. Once the investigation is complete, a new bishop will be appointed, and the West can begin working towards stability. Still, it makes you wonder how those mages managed to worm their way in to begin with. Um, I think I've got something for her. She likes, she likes to train. Really? Thanks. I love it. I haven't really given a lot of people items on screen. Uh, she likes music. Did I get anything musical wise? I think I got it for somebody else, maybe. Okay, let's see. The whistles are used to notify fellow mercenaries of one position. Of one's position. Could also be given as a good luck charm. She likes tasty food, and um, this is a tasty big tree. I'll give it to her. I'll take it. Thanks. Okay, I didn't really do that much. Okay, I'll stop doing that now. Uh, who's in the training area? Dimitri. I'll talk to the general first. Huh? Good day to you. Long ago, part of this area belonged to House Nouvelle. They produced a number of distinguished mages and were even favored by the emperor. Word has it they were utterly obliterated and in the wake of the Dagda and Bridget War. I suppose no matter how preposterous a house is, they all fall to ruin eventually. Oh, prosperous. That's what I meant. Oh, it's you. Hmm. This is unfathomable. There is naught but cruelty and suffering at every turn, I'll bet to varying degrees. Villages burned to the ground. Towns, des uh, towns deserted. Rampant poverty. I have to wonder what Edelgard thinks of all this. <laughs> say she doesn't care. Say she's frustrated. Say you don't know. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Beats me. We have no way of knowing. So what's the point in trying to figure it out? I see. Yes. Perhaps you are right. Regardless of her circumstances, there is but one path before us. No, then. Take the Imperial Capital and end the war. We need to only we need only to press onward to achieve that. Cool. I'm probably not going to use I am not going to use the Merc whistle. Who's in here? Is that who? But what? Oh. Have you heard? <laughs> What everybody's heard about the bird. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking. You know what the bird's word? Um. Oh, Commander. Before I forget, have you heard of the rumors? Have you heard the rumors about Geralt's mercenaries? Word is that they're still with the Imperial Army under General Randolph's employ. I wanted to make sure I could fight alongside you, but I got injured in the last battle. So I'll be sent to the rear for a while. Just be careful out there, okay? Thanks for the information. What is this? The death of King Klaus. Give me just one moment to just drink something real quick, because there's going to be a lot of reading. It's not like there's a lot of reading already with all this, um, all these conversations. Okay, eight pages. Uh, let's see. Chapter 9 of Royal Dilemma. With King Klaus on his deathbed, stricken with fear. Prince, uh... Ralphers' troubles were just beginning. 
So sudden was his great-grandfather's illness that the king had yet to decide which of his sons would succeed him. Uh, Crawford's eldest brother, Banfig, was a talented warrior and military strateg strategist, but was also a gentle soul with no desire for war or power. Leadership would not suit him. His younger brother, Kite, had his father's wisdom and was able to remain cool and calculating no matter the situation. However, that was precisely why the knights regarded him as too cold-hearted. Unlike his brothers, Crawford lacked a crest and thus the strength befitting a member of the royal family, so he had never seriously considered challenging either of his brothers for the throne. However, the thought of one of his brothers dying in the struggle for succession was almost more than he could bear. One day, Klaus's sister, Morianne, found a note supposedly written by her brother. It said simply, He who is most beloved by the people shall have the throne. In what was unmistakably, unmistakably Klaus's handwriting, this brief note would become the impetus up for a tragic and bloody war of succession. I am losing the voice. When the fighting was done, the knights split into three factions, each supporting a different prince. The knights of Fargus sided with Banfig, Mock with Crowfer, and Lester with Kite. They agreed to divide the kingdom itself into three as well. She despaired that her scheme had failed. Her plan to install her preferred ki Prince Kite as king was disrupted by one so banal as Crawford. Now, after innumerable casualties, the three brothers were putting down their weapons. This appears to be a novel retelling parts of Fargus' history. Okay. Interesting. It's good that I actually got to use the narrator voice for that one. What is it? It makes things go by quicker. You learn something new every day. I walk until I thought my feet were going to fall off. But this land just stretches on forever. But get this. I heard that if you keep going a little farther west, you'll see a gigantic ocean. Whoa, I, thought the, I thought the ocean was only to the north and south. You learn something new every day. Oh, Raphael. Yeah, let, let me get you some meat. This is for me? It's so nice! It's the greatest meat of all the land. Um, let's see. He likes training, so let me give him a training right. This is for me? It's so nice! It is, Raphael. It is. I should call him Raph, but I mean, I'm probably going to forget to call him that. Greetings. Shortly before the tragedy of Dusker shook the kingdom, another major battle took place in the western part of the Empire. The Imperial Army was on one side of the conflict, of course, but can you guess who they were up against? Eh, take a while, guess. Let's see. Judging from your tone, it has to be someone unexpected, like an enemy invasion from overseas. Amazing. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Actually, the Allied forces of Dagda and Brigid, Brigid, I, I, I don't, whatever, invaded sub, southwest Fodland from far across the sea. The Empire barely managed to repel them. Dagda was defeated, and Brigid fell under Imperial rule. We're headed to the exact location of that fierce battle. Right. It's like I bought a bunch of stuff for people. I'm trying to. Thank you so much. I'm trying to give some of them to like the like the recruits that I've gotten. Wow! Thank you so much. It's like I don't know who voices Ignatz. I probably don't even know like who the person is exactly. But it's like I it's like he it's like to me it's like the voice for him it's like it fits, but there are moments where it's like there's moments where he's kinda macho and like it kinda doesn't 
fit him in a way, but at the same time it does because it's like it's like it's bringing up his confidence. So it's like he's confidently saying that, saying like whatever line. Have you need of me? Even now, there are still nobles within Adrestia who care for its wealth there, such as Baron Ox and Duke Girth, or however you say that. I think it's Garth. And then, of course, there are men like Count Berglees and Count uh, Hevering. I've no objection to fighting them, but I do feel some slight hesitation. If only there was a way I, we could get them to work together with us to defeat Duke Irish forces. But no, that's impossible. I bet it is. Yeah, uh, I'll, have, I'll have to check with the tactics instructor. I'm gonna just check with him now, because I, I, I didn't get a bullion or anything. My instruction comes at a high price. Because I have to... I have to upgrade, I think... I think it's just uh, Balthus's stuff. I think it's just his stuff. Because I, I was able to upgrade Rodrigues, I think, last chapter. I don't think I had to, though. That's weird. Like, that's weird. It's like... Is it green for everybody? Okay, it is green for everybody because that's completed. Uh, let's see. I need to see if I have enough. Guys, okay, like, I don't want to do a group session. Can I just do everything at once? I want to do everything at once. Yeah, because I'm, I'm getting broker and broker. Okay, so I have two warrior gauges for him. His unique action ability at 200 hits powers up attacks proportional to the hit count. Because it was 300 from what I read before. But now it's 200. It's like when his HP is at 35% or below, greatly increases, increases critical hit rate. When order to seize, increases damage dealt to enemies by 40%. He use concoctions. He can use concoctions five times. He has eight ability slots. He doesn't have eight abilities, but he has the slots. And he has a 40% chance to recover HP when landing a combat art. That is pretty useful. Don't neglect your daily studies. Alright, cool. So he's upgraded and I'm still broke. I'm not gonna be able to buy anything on this one. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of side quests. I'm gonna have to do the side quests, the challenge quests, like whatever this chapter throws at me to actually get enough. Probably get enough money or get enough stuff to sell for the money so I can upgrade things. The story goes. The situation being what it is, my father hasn't presented me with any marriage proposals lately. However, this that also means House Galatea's finances won't be improving anytime soon. Hmm. I have no idea what I should do after the war is over. No, I can't think about this right now. I need to focus on the battle before us. You'll be fine, Ingrid. You'll be fine. Cause I I, I actually like Ingrid. My father has finally returned. He may be he may have relinquished his position as Duke, but he's still running himself ragged. Not that I have any room to talk since I'm always away fighting on the front lines. I really should go back home and see how my family is doing once in a while. You're becoming your father. You're becoming more like your father. Take a line from Peppy. Have you lost your minds? I heard we're going to start attacking the Empire a bunch. Have you lost your minds? Hmm. How can this be happening? I don't want to die. Appeal to her emotions. Hey. So what? You want to tell all the Kingdom people who suffer just to pack up to just pack up and go home? Wait, what? Well, of course not. But maybe they could anyway. <coughs> Sorry. This belief that we need to fight violence with violence means I can't go and hide. 
You'll be okay, Bernie. You'll be okay. Just stay in there until I summon you for battle, which will be soon. I do trust you. I wish to speak with you. I received word that a suspicious character named Myson was among those colluding with the Western Church. This person reportedly wields a power similar to your own. Do you have any idea who they are? Don't answer. My apologies. I did not intend to upset you. The Archbishop is concerned about this individual as well. That is all. Please understand that I was compelled to ask because of my position. However, I do trust you. It's all good, Sedith. We boys. I wonder if like somebody started talking slang to him. Is like if he would if he would understand any of it. Or like how he would react to it. Hey! Look, I don't mind fighting the Empire, but we have to let General Randolph live. He turned a blind eye when I escaped from the Imperial camp. No one wants to be a part of the raids they're doing. Not even him. Please, you gotta believe me. <coughs> Excuse me. Not the Senate thing, it's like... <laughs> it's, I'm just trying to think, it's like, if, like, Senate would be like, I beg your pardon? If you, like, speak like that to them, to, like, people or whatever. It, it, it'd be... It'd be pretty funny. The truth of it is... How many years has it been since I lost my parents to the epidemic? Okay, epidemic, not pandemic. My siblings and I had no place to call home, nor any food to eat after that. We were all wasting away. There was no one to turn to, and we barely had any money. So I did some things I'm not proud of in order to survive. In that town we passed through a little bit ago, I saw so many kids in the same situation. It made me think about how we have to end this war as quickly as possible. We need to end this war as quickly as possible. The quicker we end this war, the quicker I can play Engage. Oh, hey Lorenz. Hmm. It appears that some generals in the Kingdom Army do not trust the Alliance. What about you? Do you have confidence in us as your allies in battle? Uh, I'll say yes. Right on. Yeah, I trust you. Claude's a different story, though. Ah, huh, you are right to be wary of him. I cannot help but feel sorry for you, despite being our ally. That being said, we have not received any, uh, duplicitous... I, I don't know how to say words. <laughs> Orders from our Blackguard leader. Of that, I give you my word. You like flowers? How kind of you. Dang it! Is not a twofer. I like red roses. Uh, what would benefit the nobility? He likes tea. Oh my, this is lovely. Let's see if I can give him one more thing. He's not a fashionable man. He likes art, so let, let me give him this one. How kind of you. <laughs> I was talking that whole time. I was trying to hold back the cough. I mean, sorry about the coughing. Whenever it pops up. So let's go up in here and talk to a knight of Saros. That reminds me. I'm actually a minor lord from House Gillinger, so I could be considered an Imperial nobility. My uncle is the head of the family now. He's a man who lives and breathes violence. I got sick of his guff and took off. I don't even consider him family anymore. He's been kicking up a fuss in the West, but it's high time we put him in his place. Yeah. Hey, it's, uh, it's Rodrigue. In truth. His Majesty's mother passed away shortly after he was born, which meant he had to grow up without a mother's love. 
That is why he adored Lady Patricia, as though she were his real mother. Perhaps I never should have known, shown him that letter. <clears throat> Tell him not to worry. You don't have to worry about Dimitri. He's more mature than you think. Besides, the letter would have found his way, its way to him eventually, even if you haven't given to it, given it to him. Yes, I see. A, a valid point. Perhaps you are right. I ask that you continue to support His Majesty as a trusted friend. I have a feeling something's going to happen. <laughs> it's like they keep mentioning stuff like that. We have another conversation. That aside, the time is ripe for us to seize the Empire's lands. The enemy will undoubtedly risk life and limb to resist, just as we, just as we did six months ago. We mustn't forget that we are the invaders this time, trampling through others' lands. Okay. I, I guess we're done with that. Uh, let's go ahead over here. Hey, Sadath. Uh, oh, wait. Quit staring at me. Okay, uh, hmm. Yeah, you're wearing bright yellow. It's like, you're, you are you stand out. Other than those guys over there, but you stand out. What do you want? Whoa, quit staring a hole through me, would ya? All I'm doing is delivering some packages for my lady. More specifically, I serve Lady Hilda of House Goneril. This one's got tea leaves for Lord Lorenz, and this one contains sweets for Lady Marianne. Then there's this dusty old book for Sir Ignatz. Oh, and some meat for Sir Raphael. Go ahead and check them out if you don't believe me. I swear to the goddess, I ain't doing nothing shady. You cool. Let's check, let's check, with, <laughs> let's check with the gatekeeper. Greetings, friends. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Hold on. <clears throat> nothing to report. Greetings, Commander. Nothing to report. Well, actually, there is loads to report, just nothing inside the base. Oh. Imperial territories are in complete chaos. My family lives in Embar, and I'm just worried sick about them. They'll be fine. We'll send... We'll send aid. Hold on. <laughs> Us mercenaries can't always choose who we fight. But if I have to kill someone, I'd rather they be bad guys like the Empire. How about you? I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take them over fighting the good guys any days, d any days, any day, no question. All right. Let's put as many of them in the ground as we can and restore peace to the world. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you flowers. Yeah, I'll, I'll just get rid of these. Thanks, I suppose. <clears throat> Did that buy anything for her? Archery, throwing weapons, gambling, paychecks. Okay, uh. I don't have paychecks, but I have an ancient coin. Thanks, I suppose. <clears throat> That's not enough paycheck, apparently. Well, I was buying a bunch of stuff, but then I was running out of money. Um, I'll give her a hunting dagger. Thanks, I appreciate it. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I need to keep some of those for uh, Marianne. Because I haven't seen her yet. <clears throat> These guys. Seriously? So, Balthus, what were you doing cozying up to the Empire? Did they pay you that well? Right. Pretty much. Till a few months ago, I was practically living in the lap of luxury. Hmm, you picked a bad time to defect then. I suppose you like taking orders from a sniveling lowlife. I don't know. You're really going to go there, huh? Though I guess you know all about taking orders from lowlives. I heard you were fighting alongside those chumps from House Row and Arin Road. As if I went back there by choice, a stable manure pit would be a thousand times more preferable. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> you got a mouth on you. You still got a mouth on you, that's for sure. But you know, it's oddly comforting. <laughs> Heh, right back at you. Uh, I'm relieved you're still the same old meathead. I will give you a gift. Dang, I, I, I wish I didn't give those sweets to, um... 
to... Who did I give him to? To Catherine. <clears throat> oh yeah, board game. You really know what I like. Yeah, I do. He likes family. Uh, let me give him another board game. You really know what I like. <clears throat> if you like family, let me introduce you to Dom. Okay, so I got the support conversation with him. What can I give him? Gold, fighting, women, gambling, grit, bravado. Okay, let's see. Um, gold. Just to have a... I have an ancient coin. It's gold. Must be my lucky day. Alright, uh... Hmm... I have nothing that would, like, be, like, bravado. Probably Legends of Chivalry? Thanks, pal. You're welcome. Okay, so that's, that's all right now uh <clears throat> i do have to get some new battalions but i don't have the money for it <clears throat> there's mainly people that are getting that are being upgraded that are getting a level a level authority so it's like i kind of need to level is like just give them better battalions but it's like some of the B battalions have like really it's like I have a really good percentage on them, so is I, I I should be good for right now. The thing is Six months ago I wanted to protect everyone from the Imperial invasion. But now we're the ones invading. I can't help but feel kinda guilty about it. I'll empathize. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel the same way. I just try not to think about it. I don't know how you can just push it from your mind like that. It's amazing. Let's give it our all. I can't let every little thing get to me. I'm going to do my best to follow your example. <clears throat> um. Bandits attacked my caravan not far from here. I was the sole survivor. I had no idea what to do or where to go, but the Knights of Saros came to my rescue. All this time I thought the Central Church was just a steaming pile of garbage, but I guess I was mildly, mildly, wildly mistaken. <clears throat> the Church has your back. The turntables have turned. A whole bunch of people have been defecting from the Empire lately. I did the same. I worked for the Empire at the beginning of the war, betting they would win. That's all. But now my money's on the kingdom. I'm riding this prize, prize horse to victory. Well, yeehaw. Oh, I'll go over here. It's happy! And I'm getting some Marianne's in there. Hmm. I'm express concern. You doing all right? <clears throat> thanks. Yeah, thanks. Just trying to hold back a sigh. Staying quiet is just less effort overall, unless you wanted to chat about something. <laughs> if that's the case, we can talk as long as you want. Maybe that'd be better, honestly. Um. Okay. I don't remember if I completed all of her support conversations. I'll check I'll check that after um I talk to Marianne here. Something's clearly amiss. My adoptive father sent a missive apprising me of the Alliance's progress. They have already crossed the Aramid River and invaded Empire territory, though the Imperial Army has been slow to respond. Something is clearly amiss in their ranks. I'm concerned about Edelgard. I'd be concerned about her too. 
I kind of am, because, yeah, they kind of did her dirty. It's like, so far, she had a better showing in three houses on the blue line path than this, with, like, what they did to her. It's like, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, or, like, at least three hopes, check. Check two chapters back, I think. I think it was chapter nine's. Yeah, chapter nine's uh, main quest. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you being a good mage. Well, good healer and stuff like that. <clears throat> Give her the god wait. Give her the goddess statuette. Oh, thank you. Wait, I thought you liked the goddess. You don't like her statuette? You like reading. Let me, let me give you a uh, violet. Oh, thank you. She likes delicate flowers. Do I have anything to read here? Well, I'll give her this. Okay, that's great. Alright, cool. Um, <clears throat> let me check that thing real quick. Okay, so I did complete Happies. That's all that I did get a bunch of... A bunch of conversations with... Uh, with Shez. <clears throat> yeah, that one was really close. <clears throat> pretty, pretty, pretty close. Uh, let's see. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah, so I'm, 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 yeah. I'm more broke than I was before. Um, I bought two master seals. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna take this time because I've I've been around the entire area. I only had like one thing to read. Well, I haven't been like everywhere, but <clears throat> I'll probably look everywhere real quick. <clears throat> look where I haven't looked. And then uh this probably do some some training up or whatnot, and then end it off there. So I'll be right back. This seems a good fit. You can't do the job without the outfit. I can work with this. Okay, so that'll be all for this base camp focus. Next time when I pick this up, I will be going into like the first side quest or the first couple of side quests for chapter 11. And then we'll figure out what the paralogs and stuff will be as well, if there are any. So until then, I'll be seeing you.